Welcome to The Report. This is a new series I'm doing covering topics and concerns of lore that have direct influence on the gameplay of Star Citizen. Our first topic is that of the unofficial alliance of outlaws, pirates, syndicates, and rebels that I like to call the Outlaw Confederacy. In this report, we'll be breaking down a few things. First, we will define what I mean when I say Outlaw Confederacy. Second, I will define the systems and borders of this criminal government. Then lastly, I will explain how the systems of this confederacy play into the game now and in the near future. Now, before we begin, I want to let you know that we'll be discussing potential plot points gleaned from Squadron 42 trailers and the vertical slice. I will warn you about the potential spoilers at that point for those who are trying to remain in the dark about the plot of the game. But first, I want to explain the words I have chosen to describe this group, as they both tend to have different popular definitions which people might misunderstand. Now, an outlaw is historically not just a criminal. Its original definition is actually just someone who was deprived of the protection of the law, meaning they don't get help from their governments. So when I say outlaw, I both mean those who are actively wanted by the UEE and those who have chosen or were forced to flee to these areas. The word outlaw does a good job of describing the general reality of those who live in these systems, people who live outside the protection of the UEE. As for what a confederacy is, that word comes with a lot of, well, historical baggage. A confederacy is defined as a loose alliance or league of people, groups, or states. Um, a good example of c confederacy in modern sci-fi would be the Outer Planets Alliance, or OPA, from The Expanse. They're uh, various groups with a similar goal and vague ties to one another. This is the definition I'm referring to when I talk about this outlaw confederacy. Now that we have a basic idea of what I mean by outlaw confederacy, let me explain how these systems and groups of gangs, rebels, and smugglers form this loose alliance. Every instance in lore of the UEE trying to dislodge one group of outlaws from one of these confederate systems has always ended with the outlaw gangs of the system unifying against the UEE invaders, whom they consider a common threat. While the UEE wasn't ever really threatened by these outlaw militias, it does show that these outlaws see themselves having more in common with each other than the UEE fighting together rather than fracturing in the face of the advocacy or the navy. They even have agreements, pacts, and treaties, which they mostly honor amongst one another. In fact, they act very similar to the ancient Greek city-states, who usually squabbled amongst one another but would unify against a common outside threat. If left alone, it would not be hard to see a charismatic leader or a common threat which might drive these disparate groups together as one common unit, a single government upon which could threaten the UEE itself. Now that we understand how this confederacy could and does exist, let's define the area of this supposed state. The cultural and political capital of this group is easily Cathcart, specifically Spider Station. Far from being a lawless free-for-all, there are very specific rules and laws which are enforced by the people who live, work, and frequent spider. It is a very well-regulated site, with thousands of residents who have been born and raised in this outlaw hub. It's also growing and changing. More ship hulks are added all the time, expanding the maze of derelict ships even more, repurposing old capital ships to be grocers, farms, or even drug labs. For all intents and purposes, this is the center of outlaw life in the UEE. It is the most politically and economically stable outlaw settlement. Thus, it not only attracts pirates and smugglers looking to sell their ill-gotten gains, but legitimate traders looking to keep the station supplied. The systems connecting Cathcart also have the advantage of being mostly unclaimed, especially the Hades and the Nexus system, meaning there isn't much threat to this capital especially when it comes to Nexus, which in many ways serves as a rival and military headquarters of this lawless government. Nexus has had a reputation for being the home of various scoundrels and ne'er-do-wells for generations. It is often called the crossroads of crime. One outlaw famously said, all roads lead to Nexus, and you'll probably get robbed on all of them. 
This is because the system itself is placed right next to the main trade and travel lanes between Seoul and Terra, as well as having several jump points to allow for easy travel in and out of the system. This has made it an ideal location as a base of operations for raiders seeking to plunder the UAE. As a result, Nexus is almost the de facto staging grounds for most of the combat capable groups in this outlaw confederacy, the military hub of sorts. It has also become the main front in the war between this outlaw confederacy and the United Empire of Earth. Now, connected to Nexus through Ellis is the infamous home of Drake Interplanetary, Magnus. Magnus is a lawless system in all but name. The industries that used to define the system are long gone and were replaced by pirates, smugglers, and outlaws looking to stake their own claim. It is a frontier system, and like the boom towns of the Wild West, it's very easy for unsavory types to slip in and out. In many ways, if Spider is the capital, Magnus is the industrial center of this confederacy. Giving outlaws access to modern weapons, ships, and supplies through companies like Drake Interplanetary, who don't mind selling to whoever has the credits. The last three systems that form this unofficial government at the heart of the UEE are Pyro, Nyx, and Odin. Now, Pyro is just one system away from Magnus, through Stanton. Nyx has a jump point connected to Pyro, and Odin is accessible through Nyx. Each system has their own formal governments, be it the rulers of Ruin Station in Pyro, the rebels of the People's Alliance of Levski, or the dangerous Odin Munitions Corporation, which vies for power of the profitable coil. Now, Pyro is in many ways the second front in the Confederacy's fight against the UEE. Pyro's main settlement, Ruin Station, is less a home and more of a forge, where the best and brightest outlaws test their mettle against one another, with only the strongest being allowed to rule. The current owners and rulers of Ruin Station are a group known as Xenothreat. They hate the UEE and feel like the government has become infested with aliens and their sympathizers. They also believe they're trying to oppress humans everywhere. They are violent and ruthless in their execution of their own perceived justice. Nyx is more peace-loving and represents the faction amongst the outlaws that would prefer overthrowing the government through peaceful means. They still very much have defenses, but tend to not participate in the lawless raids and slaughter of Nexus or Pyro. They have formed a semi-communist government known as the People's Alliance on an abandoned mining station called Levski. Their main objective is to liberate their human comrades, still in chains inside the UEE. Despite not participating in the piracy of their neighbor systems, they still participate in the illicit economy. Levski is probably the second most stable settlement in the outlaw confederacy, though it lacks the political and cultural influence of Spider. The last system in this confederacy would arguably be Odin, though technically a UEE system, it is only lightly patrolled by the Navy, so it is only nominally part of that government. With no major settlement, it seems that the Odin Munitions Corporation are the real power in the system. The OMC are even forcing the Shubin mining presence in the system to pay them protection in order to keep Shubin's operation in the coil running smoothly. Now that we know the systems in the Confederacy, let's talk about how these systems and this outlaw Confederacy impact the game now and will impact the game in the future. The only major conflicts currently going on between this outlaw government and the UEE resides in three places, Nexus, Pyro, and Odin. Let's start with Nexus. Because of the major outlaw presence in Nexus, along with the embarrassment that was Keller's run, the UEE advocacy was forced to act, invading the Nexus system with the help of the UEE Navy. While locals of Nexus fought valiantly, they were no match for the combined might of the UEE. However, the system was not so easily pacified. Shortly after the main battles ended, a group known as the Horizon Crew, who were the de facto leaders of the Nexus Defense Force during the initial fight, returned to the system out of desperation. They planned a daring raid to capture OP Station Demian and use it as their fortified base to try and reclaim the system. Unknown to them, the station had become a holding point for families of military and advocacy personnel who were scheduled to be placed in new homes around the system. This was done in hopes that their presence might pacify the system and push it to become more friendly to the UEE. The crew was ruthless, almost perfectly pulling off their raid, save for one communication which got out to an advocacy agent by her son. Sadly, he did not survive the raid, 
as the Horizon crew murdered the entire station's inhabitants. The only remains of the boy who called for help is a bloody handprint, which became synonymous with the fight for Nexus. Eventually, the UEE Marines had to be called out to dislodge this elite outlaw gang. It was a punishing fight for both sides, with the Horizon crew fighting to the last man. The fight for Nexus actually plays out in the game right now, and will shortly more in the future. The raid on OP Station Demian is actually reenacted in the electronic access game Star Marine, which you can play today, playing as either the Horizon crew or the UEE Marines sent to dislodge them. You can even see the bloody handprint of Arjun Walser recreated as well, a reminder that what you're playing is an actual piece of lore. Soon, you will also be able to play the Star Marine mode Theaters of War. The first map available is inspired by the ongoing war in Nexus, with you either playing the Outlaw Supreme trying to defend your holdings or the Advocacy trying to root them out. You are, and will be, playing on the front lines of the war between the Outlaw Confederacy and the UEE. Next, let's look at the impact of the Pyro system on the future of the game. Pyro has been mostly abandoned, but for criminals and squatters who have turned an old abandoned operation station, built as the headquarters for a failed attempt to mine the system, into their own outlaw settlement called Ruin Station. In many ways, Ruin is the violent reflection of Spider. The station is growing steadily, with hulks of ships being added to expand the superstructure, though unlike the orderly Spider, Ruin is constantly up for grabs to those with the most guns and the people willing to use them. Only the strongest groups can control this station, and various groups always vie for power inside the station's halls. However, there are people who live and work in this station. Corner 4 is arguably the only safe area and the main control hub for the station. It holds what used to be a series of research labs which have been converted into manufacturing illicit drugs. It also has the local dive bar known as Neutrality. It's the only safe space on the station, with armed thugs known as Cousins maintaining the peace within the walls of this drinking establishment. The current rulers of Ruin are the Xeno Threat, a gang of ultra-violent extremists who see aliens as inferior and attempting to subjugate mankind through subversive means. They also believe that the corporations of humanity are in on the scheme, selling out their own people for a quick buck. As Pyro will be in-game soon, it is important to know what you're getting into when you visit. Xenothreat aren't the only gang in the system, and although it might be valuable to exploit this desolate system for its rare resources, know that others are looking to exploit you for your hard work. Xenothreat may even lash out into the Stanton system if rumors prove to be true. As Stanton is the center of the corporate universe of the UEE, it is a juicy political target for the group who blames these very corporations as much as the UEE for the infiltration of alien cultures. This may offer the first real lore event in game, forcing you to fight against these ultra-violent extremists bent on havoc and destruction. Lastly, let's talk about Odin. This is where we will be talking about some potential spoilers, as much of this information is based on analysis of Squadron 42 trailers and the vertical slice. So if you want to stop now, now's a chance. Odin is a system with a unique past. The worlds of the system were once very much like Earth or Terra filled with abundant life. Then, the star turned into a white dwarf, destroying the first planet and stripping the atmospheres of the rest. This means there are no suitable planets for humans to live on or to terraform. However, the shattered planet of Odin-1 has since become what is known as the Coil, filled with valuable resources and has been claimed by many independent contractors, as well as the home of the Shuban mining station Archon. However, it is also home to many natural electromagnetic storms, which allow many outlaws, smugglers, pirates, and more to operate inside this coil without fear of being detected. It's here where the OMC operates. A former arms maker, the Odin Munitions Corporation has long since collapsed as a company and has become an outlaw gang under the leadership of the mysterious Sato Karn. With their past as an arms maker, they are very much capable of creating a variety of weapons and possibly even ships to help them lay claim to the coil and the rest of the system. It may very well be that Sato Karn has larger plans than just the coil. His actions against Arkan Station may indicate he sees himself as the charismatic leader to unite the outlaws of the Confederacy under his banner. 
he may even have plans to use the Banu, the Xi'an, or the Vanduul to achieve this goal. Odin is the main location for Squadron 42, the upcoming single-player game set in the Star Citizen universe. The OMC are one of the main antagonists you will face in the game, so understanding their status in the context of the Outlaw Confederacy is important. You may not just be stopping some raids against a mining platform, but a war between a burgeoning nation of outlaws and the UEE. Still, at the moment, the Outlaw Confederacy is but a faint idea. While still a concept, it is quickly becoming much more of a reality, as various syndicates and gangs that make up these systems realize they're better together than against one another. Time will tell if these vagabonds become a true nation, but one thing is for sure, the UEE will do everything in its power to stop that from happening. I want to take this time to thank those who support us on Patreon. If you want to help out, consider becoming one yourself. It really does help. I hope you enjoyed this new format and would love to hear your thoughts on the Outlaw Confederacy. Do you think it could ever really become a reality or is it doomed to forever be a loose alliance of criminals? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, remember, ex Astoria at Astra.